All right, hello guys, and welcome to Celestial Invitational. It's like kind of an awkward opening there. I'm D2, with me is the highly esteemed monk. And uh, before we get started, I want to thank Temple Storm for allowing us to use their channel. Uh, very gracious of them to do so. So big shout out to them. And uh, in case you guys don't know what this is, this is a 16 man uh, tournament, eight of whom are Chinese qualifiers and eight of whom are invites, uh, most of whom aren't Chinese. And the interesting thing is that they're split up into four different groups of four and then they play a round robin and in those round robins they have to use all nine classes, Monk. Right, it's going to be a completely new format that we haven't really seen in the West. It's a really interesting one where every person has to play every single class. Um, so it'll be a four-man group uh, four players each, and by the way, D2, can you share the screen with me while we uh, talk about the, the group stage? It'll be four-man group of uh, four players each. Uh, for, first group for today, Group A, is going to be Firebat, Zoro, Life Coach, and Blue. So definitely a very interesting group. Two invited players, obviously those are going to be Firebat and Life Coach, and two uh, qualified players, Zoro and Blue. Uh, it's going to be round robin, so every player will play every other player in the group. In total, there will be six matches. Best of five conquest, top two advance. So again, the really interesting thing is that every player has to play three other players. And because there are nine classes, each player has to use three different classes for every single match. So a big part of it will be designing lineups that really synergize with each other. Like designing like a... Maybe an all anti aggro lineup against someone who you might think will bring all aggro, bring an uh, bring like an anti control lineup against a person who you think will be bring control decks. So a lot of skill not only in the play but in the uh, deck building and then in, in the decision making before we get into the games. Yeah, definitely. One thing to consider also is that they don't know uh, who they're bringing their decks against. They just kind of submitted all their decks. Match 1 is going to be 3 street decks, match 2 is going to be 3 street decks, and so on and so forth. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, one thing uh, we I should mention that is we are piggybacking onto their uh, cast, so if things are a bit off, then uh, that's why. And the uh, final thing I want to talk about... Um, actually, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, so, uh, okay, I remember. So basically, uh, in China, they've had a lot of uh, match formats where they use all nine classes, and I've uh, cast a lot of those, uh, whether it be Hearthstone Team Story or, you know, the qualifiers for this Celestial Invitational. So it's been really exciting for me. Um, as far as um, you, I mean, you've cast a lot more Western matches, which use, you know, uh, fewer classes. So what do you think about this format? I think it'll really test uh, different strengths of different players. Um, just for example, we have two players who we really know today uh, playing in today's groups, Life Coach and Firebat. And what's really interesting about these two players is they're kind of on the opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of how many different classes they use in tournaments. Life Coach is really known for only bringing four or five different classes, four or five even different archetypes. He plays pretty much mid-range Hunter, mid-range Paladin, Patron Warrior, Handlock, and Druid. And outside of that, maybe you get the odd Mech Mage, maybe an odd Mech Warrior, but nothing really else. Uh, Firebat is known for playing just about every single class. Firebat, especially in the first ever league tournament, the Kingwin Pro League, he was the only player in the group stage to bring all nine classes uh, in the group stage. So definitely a different dynamic, and definitely something I think will give Firebat an advantage in this group. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with that. Uh, being able to be so adaptable, uh, so flexible with your classes. We see that on the screen right now. They're showing some of their uh, deck lists already. So maybe some of the players can uh, take a look at this before they oh, wow. get started. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Again, we are piggybacking on uh, the Chinese stream from Douyu TV. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's going to be interesting to see if... Um, you know, life coach can adapt and bring, uh, you know, a different kind of play style with all these different decks. Uh, in particular, I mean, Shaman has been one of the weaker classes, but very recently uh, getting pretty strong with, you know, innovations by Raynet and Luffy, uh, you know, bringing out some aggro Shaman decks. So we will see if, you know, life coach can adapt and, you know, play the Smork style. Right, we just saw our first match of the day is going to be Firebat versus Life Coach, and already we're seeing very interesting decks. A lot of, uh, I would say, pretty anti control, especially with the Mill Rogue. Mill Rogue is a deck that kind of suffers against aggro, but against control, especially decks like Control Warrior, it can deal fair. It can be fairly good. Um, in addition to that, Reno Warlock and a very, very taunt-heavy Druid. What do you think about this particular lineup? This is so interesting to me. 
Uh, it's not too surprising to see the mill roam. It's actually getting pretty strong these days. Um, and obviously he's been playing a lot on stream as well. Arena Warlock is uh, obviously a, a, a strong deck recently. Uh, just really hard to get by him. Uh, kind of just throws a wrench into people's uh, you know, kind of game plans. And as you kind of refine those decks, uh, make the best of those one-off slots, you can really refine the deck and make it better than it once was um, in the beginning when people were just kind of uh, experimenting with it in the beginning. Obviously, this Druid deck is very interesting to me as well. Not very Firebats-esque, I should say. Uh, we have a... For some reason, it got unmaximized. Not sure why, guys. Uh, WTV giving advertisements out. Sorry about that. All right, we're back. And... Um, yeah, so very interesting to see Firebat play that. I do not believe he's playing uh, Life Coach in his first match, though. I believe he's playing Zoro. Is it Zoro? Okay, in, in that case, okay, we do see Zoro. Zoro, of course, is the player who qualified for BlizzCon this year. And unfortunately, he didn't really advance um, too far. I think he got to the round of eight where he was defeated, ultimately. Um, Zoro, he's a very standard player, I would say. Uh, to BlizzCon, he brought a very standard combo druid. He brought a very standard secret paladin, and he brought a very standard hunter. So nothing too out of the ordinary. From yeah. him, we'll see uh, another fairly interesting lineup. Uh, again, he's bringing two of the same decks he brought to BlizzCon, combo druid and secret paladin. But the interesting one here is the Reno Warlock, a deck that just really, you can put like 30 different cards in it, and if they can all be 30 different cards from Firebat's Reno Warlock to Life Coach's Reno Warlock to Zoro's Reno Warlock, everyone's going to be bringing something different. And I'm interested to see like the different variations uh, the Chinese players will be having on this deck. For example, Ragnaros, Twisting Nether, not particularly two common cards we see from uh, Western Reno Warlocks. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, everyone has their own real take on it. I'm not sure if there's a huge difference between Western and uh, Eastern Arena Warlocks per se. It could be just kind of individual things. Um, his doesn't look too crazy to me as far as what I've seen on ladder and uh, here and there in tournaments. I just kind of laugh when I see the entire, both, you know, both columns just completely filled up with cards uh, just all the way down. It's kind of hard to put that on the screen too when you're when you're streaming, uh, just to throw that out there. By the way, they are playing um, at a site, all the Chinese players at a specific site, uh, while most of the, if most if not all of the um, Western players uh, are going to be playing just from their houses. There was an invite extended, but uh, people thought it was a bit of a hassle to fly all the way out to China. Um, but yeah, uh, just going over it again, eight players from China who all qualified, by the way. Uh, the, the qualifications, I casted uh, the more, majority of those, six out of eight of those uh, weeks. And what happens is, uh, within those qualifiers, there were two players who were invited, three players who in, were qualified from a pro qualifier, and three players who qualified from an open qualifier. The pro qualifier was about 50 people, open qualifier around 500. Uh, so everyone more or less gets a chance to uh, get in there. I believe Zoro uh, was what, from the pro qualifier, and he qualified in week two. And um, in those qualifiers, again, they had... Uh, or sorry. After qualifying for the qualifier, uh, those eight-man qualifiers were basically similar format as today. Uh, they had to use all nine classes. So basically, if they won in the round of eight, they didn't get to use those classes in the round of four. And if they won the round of four, they didn't get to use those classes in the final rounds. And uh, what we typically saw was players saving Shaman until the end, kind of gambling that their finals opponent wouldn't have, or would anyone who advanced to the finals... Uh, would get there having not used Shaman yet because it was one of the weaker classes. Going to be a bit different today as uh, not only is it round robin so you can use your classes whenever you want, but uh, Shaman isn't as weak as it once was as we get into the game. Uh, Firebat streaming from, I believe, the Archon House. It's going to be Rogue versus Druid. Uh, I believe this is a matchup that Firebat certainly didn't want. It seems like Druid is one of the classes that can really burst a mill rogue out of the game. If you give your the, your Druid opponent um, his, his entire hand, at some point in the game, so you're gonna have, he's going to have Force of Nature, Savage Roar, and you're just not going to be able to win. I honestly think this matchup is like close to unwinnable, to be honest. Um... Yeah, I've seen uh, situations where the mill rogue has, in fact, found a way to mill the druid, but you're right, it's extremely difficult. Um, strangely enough, uh, you would think that the aggro druid would be better against mill rogue, but um, if you can find a way to kind of mill their entire deck when they get the fell reavers out, it's right. Yeah, it actually ends up being better matchup for the rogue in that instance. But um, yeah, like you said, uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, this is not aggro druid, and it's going to be really difficult for Firebat here. Right, uh, he seems to be dealing with the board pretty well. I mean, this is as best as you can kind of hope. Maybe an SI agent later on would have been nice, but uh, 
He, he knows by queuing up into the druid that he's not going to have a good time. Zoro also is not clued in at all about what kind of deck that Firebat is bringing. So uh, I think he'll have a happy surprise when Cold Light Oracle <laughs> comes down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he doesn't know what he's playing against quite yet. Uh, obviously, uh, Firebat hasn't able to, been able to uh, develop any, anything onto the board until now when he plays the Death Lord. And uh, you see Zoro's eyes light up just a little bit, but this deck isn't so crazy now, not so crazy to see it, at least on ladder. Maybe in tournaments it's a bit strange, uh, but we'll see how Zoro kind of responds to this from here on out. Right, so well, this deck has also been performing decently in tournaments over the past few days. At DreamHack, I know that Purple's teammate for from Gamers Origin when an astounding something like a 6-3 record in the group stages with R Mil Rogue in his lineup. So it's not like a t completely terrible deck at all. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that was, I believe, Proto-Hype, uh, who was uh, in the BlizzCon... I, I played him in the 2014 uh, mm -hmm. NA Championships last year. Um, but, so he's a pretty good player, and obviously on G2. But yeah, the, the big difference, though, however, in that format is that it was uh, it was last hero standing. So if your Milro kind of fails a bit, uh, then it's fine, you can move on with your other decks, and uh, sometimes you can kind of throw a wrench in your opponent. Maybe Mill Rogue is their one counter, right? They're playing all super heavy control decks, and you just 3 L them. But in this case, Firebat's going to have to find a win with this if, he's, if he wants to, uh, you know, get a win this entire series. Yeah, we talk about this being a really bad matchup, and we're kind of already discounting it, but it's... I mean, it's still okay here, but if we were to assume that he loses this, then he has a Secret Paladin, which I don't believe is a very good matchup. And then he has the Reno Warlock, which might be a little better because the Reno Warlock will tend to keep a bigger hand. Um, unfortunately, now that Firebat's deck is kind of re it's going to be revealed to his opponent, then Zora will be able to play around um, being milled with the Reno Warlock, perhaps not tapping as much. Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, that's a match that could happen in the future. And uh, really interesting <laughs> enough, uh, Zoro gets the Ancient of Lore off of that Death Lord, which is probably one of the best cards you're ever going to get off of that, especially because you don't want to be drawing anyway. Your opponent's going to be drawing for you, um, or drawing your cards for you, excuse me. And yeah, just everything working out for Zoro so far, although Firebat gets a pretty good clear there. All right. I also have to say that Firebat's hand is not looking too bad at all. I mean, Colight Oracle, Colight Oracle, Shadow Step, and uh, Gang Up are some of the cards that you do want around this type of the game. Because sometimes when you don't draw them, then your entire plan goes out. There's really no way to mill your opponent without those Colight Oracles in this deck. Yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword, though, right? Obviously, he's it, it could be worse. He could just have, you know... Gang up, gang up, uh, shadow sap or something like that. Uh, but at the same time, if he starts using those call out oracles, it's pretty hard to make your opponent, uh, you know, mill some cards right now. He could. It's definitely possible for him to mill right now with those, you know, six draws that he's going to be coming in. But at the same time, his opponent was only at five cards going in, so he's going to get a lot of options. Speaking of Zoro. Yeah, Zoro. He doesn't seem to be flinching at all at this cold light oracle, which means that. Uh, he wasn't really surprised. He saw the Death Lord, so he made a pretty good conclusion at that point that it might be just Mill Rogue. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Firebat, not going to commit to you know using a bunch of Colite Oracles, recognizes that uh, he's already seen one interface, and uh, Druid cards are pretty typically pretty clunky. It's going to be hard for Zoro to kind of just throw away cards out of his hand, and maybe Firebat will be able to make something crazy happen next turn. <laughs> Yeah, if Zoro had something like Double Pilot or Treader on this turn, for instance, I'm sure he would possibly consider playing that over the Doctor Boom, but Doctor Doom for one card is a pretty strong play, especially against Rogue. Uh, you're not going to, as Firebat, you're probably not going to want to sap it unless you can burn the Doctor Boom with uh, Colite Oracle. Um, and I think that's something that he can consider right now. If he Colite Oracles, maybe Shadow Steps, and then draws into a sap, that's definitely a, a play that he could make. A very strong one, indeed. So I actually don't know the interaction with this. Do you know um, if there's a Vanish uh, on this turn, which gets killed? Uh, if there's only one that gets killed? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, like say the... say uh, Firebat vanishes here, um, and there's a Dr. Boom and a Boombot on the board. Right. I think I think the Boombots get returned, and the Dr. Boom gets burned. Right. Because, uh, you know, when Knife Juggler is summoned, or mm -hmm. when Sacred Trial uh, activates, it's always the Dr. Boom that's summoned last. Right, right, right. Um, so this is one of the cards. Uh, so it looks like Firebat doesn't need to use the Vanish quite yet. It has two in hand, but uh, it's pretty difficult to use that card. 
um, without using prep. So it's gonna it's a pretty good turn by Firebat. Uh, he is dead to combo, however, but I think he's seen a force of nature. So uh, as Emperor Thorsen gets milled right there. And uh, speaking of Firebat's hand, Bren Bronzebeard is one of the cards that's made Mill Rogue uh, a bit better, just because you can have those hugely explosive turns with Bran that just kills your opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, Emperor Thor's and being burned was actually pretty bad for Zoro. That was actually one of the cards that could help him make this hand less clunky. And now that Zoro has two Savage Roars in his hand, at any time that he draws the Force of Nature, it's probably going to be lethal. So Firebat, I think he's going to have to rely on milling those double Forces of Nature as his game plan. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's... <laughs> Uh, that's going to be interesting to see uh, if he decides to go for something like that. Maybe he feels like that could be his only option uh, to win the game. Uh, because, again, like you said earlier, this is an unfavorable matchup. So maybe you go for something crazy, like hoping that you know one of the key cards just gets milled uh, in this instance. <clears throat> Firebat's going to be going with the Healbot and the Death Lord. Not interested in getting the double heal from the Brand Bronzier dead. Uh, essentially, this heals for the same amount anyway, unless it gets silenced. Um... So you see Zoro kind of looking at his at his uh, deck, seeing if maybe he can pick up Force Nature. He might actually even draw here, uh, just to guarantee get it, because with the double Force double Savage Roar in hand, it could be a lot of damage. Yeah, he's also considering just playing the Savage Roar uh, outright, um, but the problem with that is you already have an Innervate and you have two Savage Roars, so mm -hmm. uh, anytime you draw Force of Nature, that's lethal. Whereas uh, now Zoro has to kind of rely on getting a board on the field. Um, he also could consider playing one, one of his big minions, but the problem with that is if you play a bigger minion and it gets vanished, then because the bigger minion is played last, it will actually just die instead of returning to your hand. Right, right. Um, so Zoro getting a pretty good minion off of uh, off of this, that being the Shredder. He's actually just going to use as many cards as possible, and uh, this is pretty smart. I mean, it, this board can get vanished, but uh, unless you know, those extra cold lights that come into the hand of fire, but right now, uh, there's not going to be any cards that actually die. So, uh, Zoro not going to go for the all-in play of holding on and uh, hoping for a super double combo. And I, I kind of like this play. I don't know about you. I kind of like this. Just being proactive, not worrying about uh, the cards in this deck. Just saying, like, okay, let's put pressure on you, make you use uh, the removal that you have in your deck. Right. So I'm wondering whether perhaps... Okay, so Firebat, he doesn't... He prioritizes milling his opponent rather than uh, killing off some of the cards on the board, like Ancient of War, for example. Mm -hmm. He'd rather have his, op his opponent have the Ancient of oh. War rather than the Force of Nature. And there's the first one. Wow. That's so key. Wow. And Fruit of the Claw is also a good burn because it can charge the face as well. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's I think that's really smart by Firebat because he's recognizing that his opponent doesn't have combo. I think there might have been a turn or two here or there where uh, Force of Nature might have been lethal. So he's... Uh, correctly calculated that their force nature was in the deck so yeah he just didn't worry about the minions on the board because he can always vanish those again and he's thinking okay the ones i want to kill are in his deck and right. uh, really good play by fire about getting the force nature there and not not looking to kill the minions on the board looking to uh you know mill the the cards out of the deck really 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 well played i think yeah. Also, from Firebat's perspective, he doesn't know that Zoro also has the second Savage Roar in his hand. So if he just burned that second Savage Roar, then it would be hugely um, beneficial for him because now he knows, okay, there definitely isn't a combo coming on, and he can play a lot more greedy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that all said, this is, no matter what Firebat does, Zoro is able to put you know a pretty intimidating board on the field, as we see right here. Although there is the Blade Flurry. Uh, we'll see if Firebat kind of commits to uh, Blade Flurry here. I, I think he's seen both Force Natures, is that correct? Um, uh, I, I believe only one was burned. Um, maybe. But uh, it, like he could maybe Blade Flurry this um, and take the four damage from the uh, Pilot Shredder in this instance. Right. But, uh, so, sorry. Uh, again, uh, Firebat is just prioritizing burning the combo pieces rather than going for um, like killing off the minions like the pilot shredders. In addition, the pilot shredders would just death rattle anyway. And Oh, I guess both Force of Natures have been burned. Mm -hmm. I guess you were right. And now this is actually looking really bad for wow. Zoro. 
Yeah, so Firebat looks like he's in prime position to take this uh, improbably. Maybe this matchup isn't as bad as we thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just the key was Firebat, he, he had a lot of the things that he needed in the right order. Mm -hmm. He had exactly the, uh, the right amount of board clears early on to kill off the Azure Drake and any early pressure. And then the rest of his hand was all the milling cards, basically. The Cold Light Oracles, Shadow Steps, Gang Ups. Um, and Zoro just... He was a little unlucky, I have I have to say. He didn't uh, draw into any uh, pieces of the combo early on, or he didn't draw into both pieces of the combo. Mm. Especially considering all the cards that he was you know, getting from Firebat as well. But um, I don't know, I, I think his, Zoro's hand wasn't the worst. You know, he started with a really fast start, uh, keep in mind. He had the wild growth into uh, Innervate uh, Azure Drake. So, um, yeah, I, th I think, you know, obviously the... the uh, Druid is supposed to win this generally, but um, I don't know. I, I don't think it's out of the question to say that Firebat uh, kind of uh, outplayed Zoro here. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think that was really brilliantly played by Firebat. The keys, I feel, were prioritizing, again, <clears throat> prioritizing getting the minions into Zoro's hand and letting him burn spells from his deck rather than killing off minions mm -hmm. on the board. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, I mean, you can kind of see the evolution of uh, how Firebat is playing this, because I remember seeing, you know, you can look at some VODs of his on YouTube as uh, Firebat takes the first games, or not too happy about it. But uh, you can see some inexperience uh, when he was first starting out with the deck, and now it's just looking really, really good, really refined play by him. And, uh, yeah, he clears his Rogue, and that's out of the way for now. Um, you know, a deck that maybe could have fallen into some trouble, uh, potentially, because it is kind of an out there deck and uh, able to get it out of the way in the very first game against what appeared to be an unfavorable matchup. Firebat has remaining uh, his Reno Warlock and his kind of rampy Druid. Uh, Zoro has Druid, Paladin, and Warlock remaining. Yeah, I have to say uh, definitely very impressive from Firebat there. And with his taunt, more taunty Druid and with his Reno Warlock, I want to say that he's in a pretty good position, but I have to feel that maybe his Taunt Druid is not going to do too well against Reno Warlock. It just feels like the Reno Warlock is the uh, quote-unquote bigger deck. It has more threats, especially with Draxxas on the field. Yeah, it could be the case that Firebat wants to kind of prey on this uh, Seeker Paladin, or maybe, uh, you know, uh, just more aggressive decks in general uh, with the Reno Warlock and the Druid, uh, and this slower Druid. Uh, so it, this... This matchup right here could be very important in kind of determining the match. Uh, because obviously, Druid can go both ways, uh, depending on the kind of explosive draws that, that uh, the faster Druid can get, uh, versus the you know defensive Druid. Whereas, uh, and also the Warlock, like you said, uh, can be a bad matchup for the Druid. So this could be one of the uh, times where uh, Firebat's Druid can pick up a win here. Right, I think this is actually a pretty good matchup. Usually the combo Druid is... Not really well favored against uh, the Secret Paladin, um, just because of the amount of pressure that the Secret Paladin can put in, and also the um, the clunkiness of certain cards like Force of Nature and Savage War. But this Taunt Druid, I think, is going to do pretty well with Mind Control Tech, double Mind Control Tech, double BGH, all these defensive <laughs> minions, especially against this very, very slow start from Zoro. I have to say, this is probably like a in the 10th percentile of starts. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he has... Well, Must of Battle helps quite a bit, especially with the Avenge down, so that basically completely changed the game. If his next play was uh, Dude uh, Redemption or Cog Hammer, it would have been very, very weak, but uh, so far, I mean, this is looking okay. We'll see if Firebat commits to the swipe or goes for something else. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, Harrison wow. Jones Co comes on the field. Innervate Harrison Jones is pretty good. It's... <laughs> You know, just a, a five mana Ancient of Lore, except you draw even one more card. Right, and not only that, but you also set up for a really amazing swipe on your turn four. Yeah, absolutely. Or you could you could just play an Ancient of War, that also helps. <laughs> That's also something that you could do on turn four as Fire Vets. Zoro has the opportunity to get a lot of cards here, but he would lose out on a bit of tempo doing so. And, uh, you know, playing something like Redemption into Divine Favor... I mean, you, you get a 1-1 back, so, I mean, are you really getting the value out of that card? I mean, obviously, the Seekers aren't there for to provide too much value, but at the same time, uh, it can be pretty good, especially if you get, you know, a Tearing Redempted, a, a Shredder Redempted, something pretty good. 
Yeah, I don't think uh, Zoro is worried at all about not drawing enough cards out of Divine Favor. I think he's going to be looking at least like six cards or so. Well, Firebat going for a, I would say like a pretty greedyish kind of play, going for the mind control tech, where he had a pretty easy swipe there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see if he uses maybe some of his, more of his resources. Uh, I'm going to be coin innervate into swipe as well. So he's going to do all of that at the same turn. I uh, just wanted to kind of get uh, some minions on the board as well. Yeah, that's probably like overall the strongest play possible, especially if you steal the pilot of treasure. But he's not really too unhappy about this either. So, but the, 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 sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say like the key of secret paladin really is just to get a board um, coming into the secret pal coming into the the mysterious challenge return, and not only that, but to get, uh, force your opponent not to have a board going into his turn six, because as long as you can get the uh, mysterious challenger avenged then it's automatically a minion above 7 attack, which you can just BGH. So Firebat looks to be, again, in a pretty, um, I want to say, unlosable position, but then again, Divine Favor can do some magic. Yeah, there's some crazy stuff that can happen out of Divine Favor. And keep in mind that uh, Firebat doesn't have really any more crazy turns in him. He's used both Innervates. Um, obviously, he's used it to great value thus far, but... Uh, you know, you can't kind of rely on having some crazy turns from here on out. Just uh, standard, you know, big druid turn, just normal stuff. Looks like Zoro's going to go for that Divine Favor here, realizing he needs cards to kind of refuel him. But that's going to give plenty of time for Firebat. Though we do see the uh, Mysterious Challenger come in hand. Right. Zoro, I think he realized that, okay, I might not need this many cards from Divine Favor, but I do need a Mysterious Challenger on turn 6, and that's... Uh, pretty much the only way I will come back in this game. Challenger on 6, Dr. Boom on 7, Tyrion on 8, and hope my opponent doesn't have the exact answers. Uh, looks like we have uh, something on the board uh, about the percentages of getting Consecrate, though there's nothing in particular. Uh, Firebat has nothing really to do this turn uh, that would kind of, um, you know, get rid of the repentance so he says okay whatever i'm just gonna charge the face i don't need to put this in taunt because there's a decent chance it's repentance and uh, i imagine we're probably going to see the uh mysterious challenger here right uh, i think the the chinese production they wanted to put out consecrate because it was also a card that he was looking for mm -hmm. um even if you mysterious challenger here the opponent can just hero power and potentially savage roar for the win or just uh, pretty much just attack the face for the win, because how much damage is that on board? That's 13 damage. So anything like... Um, just keep the guess, grove. <laughs> keep, well, keep the grove doesn't protect you from noble sacrifice. Right, right. Like, right. Uh, you would need that one extra damage in, but swipe, um, another druid of the claw would really help. Um, just a whole host of things. Yeah, so right now, uh, considering that Firebat can uh, Hero Power Keeper of the Grove, if Zoro plays uh, Mysterious Challenger, Firebat right now with his hand is 1 damage off lethal. Because you said, so 13, uh, yeah. yeah, wait, 8, what? 12, 13, yeah. So I, I believe he's 1 damage off lethal at the moment. Looks right, like he's, gonna... Just gonna, he's gonna test if there is indeed a Noble Sack, which there is. Yeah, and, and he, can, he can just BGH and then, you know, go from there. So this is, I don't know, this is as over it can possibly get. <laughs> yeah, BGH, probably wild growth, I guess. But, oh, well, there's a free uh, hero power that can fit in to kill the 2-1 defender dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, not all on analysis here. Just kills the 2-1, hits phase 4. Uh, 12, and nothing really Zoro can do. I mean, even if he picks up Consecrate here, uh, he gives initiative to Fire Pants. So, yeah, I don't see any way Zoro comes back from this as Secret Paladin. Maybe if you were a mid-range Paladin, you had a bunch of healing, but yeah, there's no way. Right, no, not really too many defensive cards that Zoro can uh, have it in his deck, really. Um, and this game really came down to a combination of Firebat drawing really well, Zoro drawing really poorly, and Firebat bringing a really uh, good counter deck against the Secret Paladin. Um, just we have one player who's bringing way more traditional decks, but the other player, Firebat, he's bringing like kind of out there decks, and they just happen to be working well. Mill Rogue probably wasn't the good best matchup against Druid, although Firebat played it really well. Uh, on the other hand, Taunt Druid is going to be pretty good against Secret Paladin, so. Um, just overall, I have to give it to Firebat over in terms of he played really well, 
not only did he play really well, he brought a good lineup of decks. Yeah, so far the deck choices are working out for him. Uh, I mean, we kind of heap praise on him for the Rogue. I don't know if we can do the same here, though, for this Druid. It seems like he just kind of got the right draws, which can, which can happen. Obviously, Zoro, uh, not too happy about that. But um, didn't really get to see, you know, the late game uh, in action. Didn't get to see that Kel'Thuzad or, or uh, Sylvanas or, you know, the Ancient of Wars doing work. But uh, in any case, we are going to see the Secret Paladin go against the uh, Reno Warlock. Um, do you have much experience with the, with these particular classes? I've been kind of straying away from playing uh, Secret Paladin on the ladder. Right, I've been playing it a bit, but mostly I've been focusing on Reno Warlock. I mean, D2, are you really telling me that you haven't played a lot of Reno Warlock in the last <laughs> month or so? It's kind of like the hot new deck that we've been getting, and right. it's kind of like the one everyone's been experimenting with. I went immediately for the uh, the Smork, Luffy, Rain, and Shaman deck. <laughs> right, right. I tried that a bit. That was fun. But uh, I have to give it all to the uh, Control lifestyle. Um, it's it's a really interesting deck. It's one of every card. And I tell you, it just it's a night fair for like, sites that have to put up deck lists. Because you know, <laughs> uh, not only do you have to make the deck list, and it's like a little more time consuming, but you have to like cut and paste the pictures all together right, right. in order to uh, to make the uh, in order to like paste the deck list on your site. Um, overall, I have to say that I don't believe that the Reno Warlock is favored in, in this matchup, especially with Firebat's rather poor draws. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's part um, of the reason yeah. why this deck. Um, I was a bit skeptical uh, when this deck first came out, just because you have to put so many cards in the deck that just don't work out at all. Uh, in certain situations, just so many specific techie cards uh, in order to just make in order to get the one of of everything, uh, which is why I was uh, skeptical at first. Now I'm kind of growing on the deck. I'm kind of uh, seeing why it can be so powerful. But uh, yeah, definitely at first I was not a big fan of it. Yeah, it's one of those decks where you know how like Druid, everyone is around 20, 28 cards the same deck, and maybe two flex card positions. Or uh, what's another good example? Um, Maybe even Secret Paladin is a bit like that. I think Reno Warlock is just basically never going that path because even right now, it's about like 10 to up to 15 cards different for every deck list. Yeah, definitely. And the, the bigger thing, one of the big things too, is whether or not uh, players put in two of something. Sometimes you see two Moltens or something like that in order to kind of uh, get you know those huge impact cards and kind of gamble that you get them in your hand by the time you have Reno. I believe Firebat has uh, one of, of every single card in his deck and right. uh, does have Reno in the hand, so if ever he's in a bit of trouble, he can just hit the reset button. Yeah, the the problem against... Oh, wow, that's pretty huge seeing that Zora doesn't have any uh, AUE for that. But generally, the problem with Reno against Secret Paladin is you can either heal or you can clear the board, but you can't do both. And if you Reno on a certain turn, oftentimes the Secret Paladin already has something like... 18 or 20 points of damage mm. on the board, so Reno is actually effectively not doing much. Yeah, um, I actually ran to a Reno Hunter the other day, and... Uh, oh, very popular on the Asian server, I hear. Really? Okay. Well, it was on the NA server when I played that, and uh, I killed him two turns later after I used Reno from 1 to 30. <laughs> he went from 1 wow. to 30, the dream, and then I killed him in two turns after that, so... Uh, didn't really help him out too much, and I was playing mid-range Paladin, too, with zero burst. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work out too well, but like, yeah, like you said, sometimes your opponent can get a big board, especially something like uh, Secret Paladin, you know, all those Avenge targets plus the blessing of Kings can uh, create a huge board, and so that's the the worry, like you say, uh, if yeah. Firebat puts up that Reno and then all of a sudden there's a bunch of uh, things, you know, running at him, but uh, right, there's a bit of lag, sorry about that, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, that's why there's uh, some Reno decks, they have Twisting Nether uh, as one of their... Mm -hmm. choice 30 cards in their deck list and actually I love how Reno makes cards like Twisting Nether actually viable uh, like these cards that you just generally won't play anymore Twisting Nether, uh, Fugin and Stalag are found in Reno Warlock sometimes in fact Stan Sifka made rank 1 with that list including those two cards mm -hmm. sometimes like Stampeding Kodo Refreshment Vendor um, all these cards that you typically just never see at all in decks are being brought into this uh, and into this deck that can utilize 30 different cards. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it looks like we had a bit of a lag issue with Zoro, uh, potentially even um, a disconnect fear there. But, um, okay, it looks like we're looking from Firebat's perspective now. Uh, I guess they're talking about how Zoro has the Mysterious Challenger in hand. Uh, I wonder what the issue is here. Maybe 
Zoro might have disconnected or, you know, the other way around. But, um... Oh, looks like Rina was played. This is interesting. So, I guess the, the spectator side on Zoro is kind of bugging out a bit, and Firebat decided to play Reno? Uh, it might be that Zoro is uh, disconnecting right here, because mm -hmm. uh, we, f we were lo watching from Zoro's perspective, and the game kind of lagged out from his perspective, but w once we switched to Firebat's perspective, it all looked fine and dandy. Yeah, so that could be the case. Um... If there is a regame, um, I don't. I mean, that game wasn't too much of an outlier in terms of uh, how you know Secret Paladin goes or how we know Warlock goes. So I don't know. I wouldn't be too you know sad about a regame here. As we right, see. I agree. Like uh, I don't think I think uh, Firebat maybe had a below average draw, but on the other hand, he did get a four from the implosion, so that look kind of balances out. Yeah, that and he had the Reno in hand to kind of help him get back into the game. I feel like uh, both players had a chance to win that game, uh, so it should work out if they go uh, to another one. Going back to your point earlier about you know putting all these new cards in the deck just because you want to get one of those in each deck, uh, that and the discover mechanic, having you know cards you wouldn't normally see in uh, in decks because there's not enough space for you know certain cards to be put in. Um, I'm really liking this uh, this expansion so far, just for that fact alone, where cards you wouldn't be able to fit in normal decks, you're seeing a lot more of, and it's really uh, enriching the game, in my opinion. Right, I think it's a... Uh, it's a I don't think anyone will disagree with my following statement, but I think it's overall a lot better mechanic than Joust, which felt really uh, RNG-based, whereas Discover, yes, there is a bit of RNG, but it's very controlled RNG. You get to pick from three cards, um, each of which um, could be pretty decent. And especially with the Discoverer, um, there are cards, like you said, that typically wouldn't be put in decks, but they can be very good under certain situations. For example, uh, Jeweled Scarab discovering the, um, the uh, Elemental Destruction, or perhaps my favorite, the... Um, um, the Dark Peddler discovering Corruption, which is a, it's a card that almost no one uses, but at the right times, it can be pretty powerful. Yeah, definitely, if you have no other responses to be able to clear a, a certain minion. And it looks like we're getting back into the game. It is going to be a restart. Uh, by the way, for these guys, for those of you, excuse me, who are arriving right now, uh, this is Firebat versus Zoro. Firebat is up two games to zero. It is uh, Conquest, so Firebat only has to clear his Warlock remaining. And uh, these players do have to play all nine classes throughout uh, this round robin today. So uh, we are seeing a wide variety of classes. Uh, the other two players in this group are Life Coach and Blue. Uh, pretty good starting hand for Fire right there with that zombie chow. Oh, yeah. Uh, compared to the last game, this is just uh, worlds different, pretty much. Uh, zombie chow versus Azoro, again, who's drawn not that well. Uh, Tyrion Fording is in his hand. Mm. Um, and not really a two drop once again. And reducing that zombie chow to one HP, I think Firebat's okay with that. Yeah, I mean, basically, you've already gotten rid of one card, even if it trades here with the a two one. Your basic that zombie chow basically traded for three mana and a card. So Firebat, I I imagine, is not going to be too too sad about that situation. Gonna just tap here, and uh, I I imagine he's going to trade just so it doesn't that one one doesn't get buffed up. Yeah, um, doesn't yeah. seem. Seems kind of weird for a 2-1 to be trading to 1-1, one, one, but the damage doesn't matter with the zombie chow, obviously, because it's just going to heal back up. And, right, uh, and uh, it was possible for muster for battle to happen, and Firebat would basically just be facing 4 one ones instead of 3 one ones. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it looks like we're looking at Divine Favor for some reason, but uh, Firebat is able well, to tap here. Uh, typically, if you tap on 2 and 3 as a uh, handlock, or... Usually it's handlock when that happens. Uh, you get uh, you overdraw a card, but in this case, since he played the zombie child, not going to be the case. And Zoro's going to pick up a whole lot of cards. The maximum, I believe, you can pick up without overdrawing. Yeah, so it's going to be nine cards there. And uh, kind of a weird hand for Firebat. He can play the Hellfire, but I imagine he wouldn't want to uh, kind of waste that card right now. Right, and with that divine favor, um, Zoro's hand just suddenly went from really not that great to... Oh my god, this is awesome, because um, one of Firebat's unfair mechanics that he has for Warlock is that he can draw extra cards, but Zoro just completely negated it. So uh, Fireball will have to do a couple of more unfair things to get back in this game. Although we do see Voidcaller and no Owl from Zoro, 
we do see Draxus in the hand from Firebet, and we do see Shadow Flame, mm-hmm. which are all viable options to clear the board. But I think the the problem is that Zoro just might have too much, and he might be able to just refill the board every single time that uh, Firebat does go for the board clear. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, obviously we see those two board clears um, in hand, but uh, I mean, you you don't really want to. Uh, do it with Jaraxxus, speaking of the Shadow Flame, and it's kind of hard to do with the Abusive Sergeant. Uh, you could do with this uh, Void Caller, but what are you going to do after that? It looks like Zoro is going to play a lot of Seekers before he plays the Mysterious Challenger next turn. I was kind of eyeing that Lotheb as uh, something that he could do here. What do you think about this play? Yeah, the, I guess uh, what you're referring to is the problem with this play is that um, if Firebat chooses not to proc that many Secrets, uh, then the Mysterious Challenger will get some extra value. But on the flip side of it, if Firebat decides not to attack, decides not to proc any of these secrets, competitive spirit will go off, and that adds 5 damage and 10 stats to the board, which is something that I'm not sure Firebat can really deal with that well. Yeah, that is a lot of stats on the board that uh, Firebat is staring at right now. So in the end, worked out well for Zoro, kind of took a calculated risk, and it's going to pay off. Uh, the Mysterious Challenger doesn't grab too many secrets, I believe. We see that the uh, Avenge is not playable, so it won't grab that. And uh, that that's the second Avenge, obviously. So secret Mysterious Challenger probably draws, I want to say, one secret here? Yeah. Um, also, Redemption is uh, highlighted, but there's probably only a one of in this deck. So yeah. yeah, you're right, one secret. All right, and we've already seen Repentance, so that's probably going to be the Avenge uh, Redemption, the second Redemption from the deck, I think, and uh, the Noble Sacrifice. So yeah, this is one of the situations that you know you can find yourself in as uh, Reno Jackson that actually does come into the hand, which is pretty good for Firebat in general. But uh, when he plays it, he's going to be taking a lot of damage after that if he does decide to play it right yeah. now. Right, just the, the situation we were describing. Yes, you can play Reno Jackson heal for 19 here, but then you're just getting 20 into the face anyway. Yeah, so it looks like he's not going to go for that, I believe. He's probably going to go for uh, Shadow Flame. And, uh... Yeah, that looks like... Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, there's no secrets on the board, so that actually is going to be a wow. pretty full board clear with Jaraxxus coming on the field. Yeah, that was really... Well done by Firebat, and uh, obviously, and like we were saying, I mean, if if he had played the Reno Jackson, as we see the Noble Sacrifice come around the field, Reno Jackson would have just kind of been a waste because you just kind of take the damage back. So Firebat going for the board clear first, and then going for potentially Reno Jackson. Uh, do you think he plays greedy here and, and uh, doesn't play it again? Doesn't play the uh, which card? The Redemption. Reno Jackson. Um, Speaking of Firebat, see. sorry. Yeah, so I think. Uh, well, uh, Firebat basically has to deal with this board or heal at this point, and um, he's going to first see if he can clear the board, because obviously a Blessing of Kings here is lethal. Um, Blessing of Kings plus Owl against the Taunt would be lethal here. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he can just willy-nilly, for example, play the Dr. Boom. Yeah, what if you go for something just uh, kind of in-between play, just play the uh, heal bud? Because a lot of times it's kind of how how much greed can you... How much, how greedy can you be? Is uh, sometimes the, uh, how you win games in these high stakes environments. But you know, Reno Jackson is a pretty big body, bigger than the heal bot. So I think you might go for it anyway. Looks right, like it's good. just a overall stronger body, and not only that, but um, you're gonna heal for twelve, or sorry, for twenty two, and I don't think you can hope to heal for any more than that, or you mm-hmm. can't be that greedy. Right, right, right. And uh, gets a free quote unquote tap, uh, at least health wise. So he has, does have to use uh, the coin in order to get the Reno Jackson now, which kind of somewhat limits his plays going forward. Zoro just kind of going to hit the face right now. Really no reason to be clearing uh, Reno. And uh, no owl in the hand of Firebat. He hasn't used an owl this game, has he? Uh, no. He, he owled a, sh- a mini bot. Um, a shield and mini bot in the first game, I believe. Yeah. So let's see, what are Firebat's options for this turn? Has the Sylvanas, uh, can play that, though he is facing down 12 damage, which is half of his life total. Um, I mean, obviously the Sylvanas is pretty scary, but, uh, you know, Zoro can just kind of smork it and hope. You know, it, that, that that is something that he could go for and uh, just get so much damage onto Firebat that it's unrecoverable. Yeah, one of the um, possibly unforeseen weaknesses of Reno Jackson is 
your opponent knows you have a one of in um, of every card in your deck pretty much. So now that Zero has seen a Shadow Flame, for instance, he doesn't have to play around Shadow Flame anymore. He can play more towards the AOE. Um, normally, when you're when you're playing even Lotheb into this board, you're kind of a little afraid of Shadow Flame uh, because that will just wreck you on that Sylvanas. Yeah, definitely. And so I exactly. I don't think he played this Lotheb because uh, it you know discourages spells, which is a thing. I mean, it, it might help. Uh, it's it's uh, you know taking away one spell from Firebat right now, but more so he just wants the biggest body possible and uh, basically saying even if Sylvanas takes a big body here, uh, I'm going to have you know, more big bodies to be able to finish out the game. And he has to right. Consecrate as well. Yeah, it does um, It does hurt, for example, now Firebat is discouraged from playing Immortal Coil on that 2-1. Mm -hmm. um, he can't really Dark Bomb anything, but overall, generally, I think it's mostly for the pressure that he's putting on. And Lotheb, it's an average steal. Um, yeah, yeah, a very right average steal. Right maybe, in the middle, right? <laughs> as far well, as may the maybe median. you would want the Shredder more. Mm -hmm. But overall, just not a huge deal, I feel. Yeah, and Firebat's going to have to make something happen. Uh, I guess the Dark Peddler looks like we have a, a shot of that. Um, Corruption's not going to do anything. Probably going to be the Abusive Sergeant for its utility. And uh, yeah, Healbot, as well as the Abusive Sergeant, going to take out Tyrion. But uh, is there... How much damage do we have on the side of Zora after all this is said and done? Um, uh, 17 damage. You're much better at math than I am. Uh, but 17 plus the 2 from the from the hand, right? Right, so just one off lethal one, once again. So I guess the other question is, how much healing does Zoral think Firebat has right here? I think he has a fire a fire Seer in his deck, and that's it. So could he just go face here? Because I don't think Firebat has any way to kill Zoro uh, if Zoro just goes face here. Right. If you th just think about the potential cards that he could have that, that he could have in his deck, there's maybe a Farseer left, maybe a refreshment vendor, and maybe some taunts. But beyond that, I don't really, I don't really see anything. Milganus is also an option, but I don't think that's really going to do much against this board when uh, you've already locked up nine of your mana. So this feels really safe. This feels really good. Um, I don't really think there's a way that Fireback can get out of this right now. Yeah, he definitely. can't even tap, so putting uh, Firebat at 1 is even more valuable. Yeah, exactly. Um, Zoro taking a bit of a chance here that uh, Firebat doesn't have some sort of big taunt. Um, you know, a clear than a taunt somehow, uh, because obviously he has used his Equality Consecrate, but uh, pretty, you know, it's not that much of a risk, right? What can Firebat reasonably do here? And the answer is nothing. But Zoro's going to take his first game here, and uh, games actually do matter in the grand scheme of things um, as because of the tiebreakers. Uh, how the standings are determined is first by uh, match win-loss, so obviously you know, winning the entire series would be good. But uh, after that, it goes to game win-loss difference. So every game that Zoro can pick up here, even if he drops a series, is important. Uh, in any case, does pick up the game with that Paladin. Now he's uh, left with uh, Reno, Warlock, and uh, Combo Druid, whereas Firebat obviously has that Reno Warlock left. Yeah, I have, do have to favor, again, the Combo Druid versus the Reno Warlock, because, again, the Combo Druid, it doesn't really care too much about Reno uh, Jackson. It doesn't really care too much about him healing for um, maybe... 20 damage because he's going to win before that with Force Age or Savage War plus some kind of board. Um, but I'm really interested to see the Reno Mirror. This is actually a matchup that I haven't yet uh, yet been able to see in competitive play. So I'm honestly hoping that Firebat takes one for the team. He uh, loses this match and then we can see a good old fashioned uh, <laughs> Reno Warlock Mirror. Good old fashioned said facetiously, of course. <laughs> yeah, not only that, but uh, going to five games would be pretty epic. Um, I've heard some people say they've had trouble defeating Reno Warlock with the combo Druid, however, which uh, kind of you know stunned me, obviously, but because you know typically combo Warlocks don't do well against Druid at all. But uh, I mean, they do have so many answers, and just the ability to get out of danger uh, with the huge heal can be something. Uh, I want to remind everyone uh, that we are piggybacking on the Chinese feed, so there's a bit of lag here and there uh, because of the. Uh, I mean, things that are broadcasted from China sometimes, you know, experiences like uh, when people try to watch it from outside of China. So apologies there. But in any yeah. case, we have the egg and a uh, couple options here. What do you think is the best here for Firebat? Mm, I think uh, 
putting up a very solid board here. You really want to really contest the board against the Darnassus Aspirant. I was maybe expecting him to use the uh, Abusive Sergeant there, mm -hmm. but um, I guess he's just he doesn't want to set up for some kind of really amazing swipe turn, for example. Right. Um, yeah, he could get his board cleared, and uh, I mean, obviously, uh, the four four doesn't. I mean, in the end, it wouldn't be too good because you're not really killing the Darnassus Aspirant. But uh, yeah, I was kind of in the same boat as you. I was eyeing that uh, abusive sergeant, maybe just get the four four out now and get right. the one two one on the board. I, I do think it was clear that the um, one of the two drops, probably the uh, acidic swamp ooze, was going to be played because you really need to have some way to pressure that Darnassus Aspirant. Um, and with Firebat's current hand, I don't think he's uh, he's going to be able to do it in any other way. All right, with the feed, it looks like we had an instant replay right there, uh, in case yeah. you guys wanted that. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a tap and likely the Blood Mage downloads as Reno does hit the hand. Um, not sure if Firebat wants to see that right now. Uh, it could. It's just a nice thing to have in your back pocket if you ever you do need to uh, heal for that much. As we see a t potential turn 6 combo <laughs> from Zoro, but <laughs> likely, likely going to be the Lotha here, I believe. Yeah, one thing Zoro does have to worry about is kind of here is Demon Wrath, which is found in some Reno Warlock decks, mm -hmm. and that just kills off the 3-3 three, three Shade. But fortunately for him, he does have something to contest that, the Lothab in his hand right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, with, with the uh, spell damage from that Thalnos, and Firebat obviously wouldn't be, would be pretty happy to get rid of his own board in this situation. Um, in order to do that, looks like it's going to be Innervate Hero Power. Not going to uh, keep the option for uh, having that, you know, accelerated combo for the future. Um, yeah. I'm very curious about that decision because now there's a lot of cards that he wouldn't be able to activate any of his seven drops. Um, it really deactivates Lores and Dr. Booms from uh, his next few turns. Um, but. And also, his hand is just looking really not that great right now for a turn 5 play. Yeah, definitely. Plus, he really has no play at all to make. Uh, let's right. see if Firebat's going to... Oh, this is a pretty good play. So now he's going to be able to kill the Shade, which is uh, obviously something that you know, pretty much all classes want to be able to do, right? Just get rid of that Shade as quick as possible. As we see um, a Thorson, a graphic right there, potentially... Uh, discount this combo. So Zoro, nothing to do here other than swipe. Though swipe isn't the worst. It does get rid of the 4-4, uh, but not much more than that. Yeah, right. Like we said, uh, this Ancient of War, or this Ancient of War, rather, could be played if uh, Zoro didn't throw away the um, the Innervate. And really, the Blood Mage Thanos, I feel like, wasn't really hurting anyone. Um, mm -hmm. Because you played Lothab on the same turn, then... Um, your opponent can't really abuse the spell power from the Blood Mage Shadows. But then again, if he didn't innervate the um, the Blood Mage Shadows, or he, if he didn't innervate the hero power then, um, he would be kind of have to be worried about this Blood Mage Shadows behind a bunch of taunts. But again, you can just swipe that off. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe a bit hasty play there by Zoro uh, going for the innervate when he didn't really have to. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is kind of the you know worst case scenario for Zoro. Really nothing to do nothing to do again. Uh, he can take get rid of this sludge belcher which hit or the front two thirds or so of this sludge belcher, which I imagine he'll do because it's better than just hero power not even attacking and then passing. But uh, this is kind of the dream for Firebat and this could be the second time that Firebat defeats what uh, you know you and I think are kind of unfavored matchups, but uh, maybe they aren't as unfavored, you know as we once thought. Maybe Druid isn't quite as strong as we once thought. Right, there's just really not that much data going around uh, about especially Reno Warlock matchups because every Reno Warlock deck is a little different. Um, not just a little different, but again, wildly different. Probably 10 or 15 cards off from each other. Yeah, and the good thing about the, the interesting of that uh, sorry, the interesting thing about that is that uh, it's kind of its own challenge stone, right? Uh, speaking of, you know, hosting on Temple Storm. But uh, everyone gets to kind of build their own deck, you know, kind of test their deck building skills. How well can you build a deck with only one of, you know, in, in the deck to make sure you have that uh, Reno go off? But uh, yeah, it really tests the deck building skills. But as for now, it looks like Firebat's done a pretty good job and uh, in dominant position being able to drop this Dr. Boom. 
Right. Well, it tests uh, your deck building skills, but it also tests your uh, net decking skills <laughs> because you can just always, you know, Ooh, just go wow. on. <laughs> Dr. Boom, Battle Cry, summon two Boom Bots, and uh, make your opponent draw BGH. So... Right, put a BGH in your opponent's hand. <laughs> I mean, it's all really not that great for Zora. He plays Doctor. He plays uh, BGH, and then what? He he kind of again concedes the board with really nothing to do besides hero power, perhaps fitting in a walled growth. But honestly, the walled growth isn't even going to do much here. Yeah. Um, so obviously, it looks like uh, Zoro, after this kind of uh, subpar turn, what do you think Firebat's going to do? Do you think there is potential for a Temple Reno here? Um, well, I think definitely a life tap is going to be used. Um, once, unless, unless he gets a big yeah. eight drop, obviously. Yeah, unless he gets something big, then he's going to life tap, and then he's going to consider everything. But if he just oh, draws Thoris dead, is big, yeah, Thoris is yeah. A big card. Okay, never mind. That's pretty amazing. I really wanted like, to if, see if he would do that to go for the Temple Reno because obviously, I mean, Healbot does basically the same thing, right? Except Reno's just right. bigger. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely think you can consider it if you have all situational cards. A four six is a pretty big body. It's like kind of almost like a five statted minion. Five yeah. mana cost added minion. With, uh, yeah, obviously that, I mean, and you see that all the time, right? Sometimes you just kind of have to play, you know, the cards, the card naked, so to speak, uh, just to get that value out. Zoro with a pretty tough turn here. Um, he could go for the Sylvanas and maybe, I don't know, just hit the face. Uh, just to, like, for instance, what if Firebat tries to, uh, you know, go for the trade with both of them, but somehow kills the Sylvan. It looks like it's not going to be the case. It's going to be the Ancient of War to be able to uh, contest this uh, this uh, Thorson a lot better. And Zoro yeah. does have lethal if Firebat doesn't deal with this and doesn't heal. And doesn't play uh, Malganus and doesn't play uh, Lothar. <laughs> right, so basically, as long as Firebat doesn't play half the cards in his hand right now, then Zoro wins. <laughs> right. There, there's, a, there's, there's a hope. There's hope for Zoro here, but... Um... So there is Doomguard or, or, there. Or Doomguard. Or Even Doom Doomguard clears this. <laughs> so he has to just play uh, Temple BGH and Zombie Chow. And, and, and maybe maybe Dark Bomb the Ancient <laughs> of War. Yeah. Uh, that's the only way that Firebat uh, dies here. But looks like it's going to be Lothem. Just kind of uh, contest the board a bit. Play the Zombie Chow as well because he doesn't really care about his opponent's health. And, uh, yeah, no real way for Zoro to do anything here as far as trying to lethal the opponent. Though he does get a pretty uh, beefy minion there. And a, a good minion to be able to reduce that combo, uh, the combo cost. And if he picks up a Savage Roar after this, he can double combo. Right. Um, one more turn of Emperor Thor's in, and Firebat will have his own combo of Melganus, Doomguard, <laughs> a Dark Bomb. Uh, and that's, uh, BGH that's, just in case. <laughs> right, BGH just in case. Uh, kill your own Doom Guard, for instance. And you do uh, a 10 damage combo to your opponent's face. Yeah, that would be pretty insane. Uh, but yeah, a lot of uh, kind of interesting cards in Firebat's hand. Has some situational cards and some healing cards. Obviously, the healing would be is pretty nice right now. Um, let's see. What's, what's the damage with combo here uh, from Zoro? He would, it's uh, 21 plus uh, 7, so 28. So if there's a Reno here, then Firebat doesn't die to one combo. Probably going to see Firebat just uh, clear here, it looks like. Uh, give up that Thorison. Um, he's got enough discounts already. Use that Dark Bomb, clear with the Savannas. So this is a pretty good situation for here. Uh, we might see him go for... I'd like to see just a Reno and a, um, a Shredder. What Shredder. do you think? Yeah, yeah, I agree. You don't really need to be that greedy and fit in a tap, but okay. It really doesn't matter at this point, to be honest. Oh, what is he doing? Oh, he's, is he gonna... He's, he's thinking of... He's gonna Shredder and Healbot instead. Oh, right, right, right. So... Yeah, just wanting to get that extra card in and realizing that at 18 health he's fine, unless his opponent perfectly has, you know, Force, Roar, Innervate or something like that, and then he draws right. the other one. So instead oh, going Mel to be Melganis, which is, uh, obviously he's at 17 health, quote-unquote, which means um, he's not going to die to any sort of combo. Zoro has no way to kill it other than using his combo. So right. uh, in so, the end... Sorry, go ahead. Firebat did this because he he realized his opponent uh, played his BGH, probably doesn't have another BGH. But then again, has Firebat seen double uh, Innervate already? Because I feel like if he went for the line of play that went for Reno and 
pilot her, then he has no way to lose this game. Yeah. Whereas with this line of play, the, if Zoro had the double combo, I think he... Yeah, I think he wins the game if he has double combo because the hero power and one tree goes into the Melganis and the other two trees go into um, Firebat's face. Yeah, um, he has seen one Innervate. He hasn't seen both, I don't believe. But uh, I think it's just kind of him wanting to be as greedy as possible. Um, maybe tapping, just getting more options in hand, like the, you see the Void Collar right now. And so I imagine we're probably going to see you know double 4-drop here. going to be the Reno, free tap, so to speak. And... Uh, Clear off this Thorosin, so you don't have to deal with it anymore. And uh, obviously, gonna get that Void Collar out. Could it be the Void Collar or the Shredder, but obviously, Void Collar spawns uh, more or less like a seven ish drop <laughs> rather than yeah. a two drop. So, yeah, works out well. Right, and this is about the point in the game where Zoro probably should concede at this point. Um, I mean, there's no real need to concede I don't believe because obviously we've seen the decks on the screen as well which is super interesting and he's not going to be using these decks going forward obviously since uh, in case you guys didn't know and you weren't here at the beginning of the broadcast they are going to be using all nine classes uh, so I mean this information doesn't really matter so, uh, I believe he's just gonna you know play it out see if he can pull some sort of miracle win so uh, with that miracle win what can Zoro even draw in the following turns and what can, what does he have to do right now and to secure that miracle win? I think he does just he... has to right now. I think um, yeah, I think you just go face here. Like yeah, just swipe the face and then hero power face. Hope you draw a big minion. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna kill the Melganis. Okay, yeah, it's just sacrificing some health to get the big out of the field. So he has you know a, a few turns to work with, and then from there. Uh, let's say Firebat does nothing and he just kind of goes face for some strange reason <laughs> and Zoro picks up the second Savage Roar, then he has lethal. Um, yeah, I imagine since that's, and since it's gone picked off, it looks like he wants to get a big card and then from the, but then there's Sylvanas. I don't know. <laughs> Every time I try to just, like say something that works, it's just, <laughs> right. oh, there's Sylvanas, never mind. Wait, Firebat's not playing around my control tech. So... Assuming that Zoro got my control tech and he stole the best card, which is probably Sylvanas, then does he have a chance? Then um, there's still ten damage on board, I and I guess I guess Firebat doesn't have a lot of burst. Um, although we do see that uh, Firebat actually does have nine damage burst from hand, yeah, so even does. that loses. <laughs> he does have quite a bit of burst. Uh, I think Zoro's best chance here is to go for the one in seventy or whatever it is, uh, Doomsayer, and then just try to get a board after that and chip away. I think that's honestly his best chance. Right. And uh, how do you do that? Do you use your Savage Roar, or do you go for the Force of Nature? I think you... Oh, that's right, because he already used one Force, so... He... Right. Hmm. I think you this, go this... for the, the Force and just try to get a big board later, or some sort of board. Okay. Yeah, just because you don't want to be... I don't think you can take the damage, really. Because um, once you get your minions on the board, and Firebat has his own minions, you don't want to be trading... Uh, anyway, you want to be going face, and if you're down to 13 health at that point, it could be tro a problem. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Zoro's going to do neither, and I think right. Firebat has enough damage to finish out the game right here. Oh, definitely. Uh, so Firebat has two damage off lethal on board, so he just needs one burn spell. Play the Dark Peddler. Maybe, yeah, it's really Dark Peddler. Go for the BM. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's going to be it. So uh, regardless of how Firebat does it. Uh, Deciding he does go for the Dark Feller. Uh, I hope they show it. I guess they power overwhelming. Oh, um, misplay. Misplay. <laughs> oh, and he discards it power overwhelming. But, um. <laughs> maximum BM. And yeah, look right there. Zoro's not going to stand for this. Okay. Alright, there we go. Firebat picks up the win. Uh, Zoro, not too happy about it, obviously. And uh, as far as game scores are concerned, Firebat now is plus two on the day with that 3-1 victory, and Zoro is minus two. So that could come play into play later on the day. Uh, that'll do it for our first game. We do have five remaining uh, series for you today. And... Right, so the, the next one will hype up a little bit for you guys. It's going to be Life Coach versus Blue. Um, and the interesting part, thing about this series is that Light Coach will be playing Priest as one of the classes in his lineup, Priest. A class that Life Coach has never played in a tournament ever in his life. Um, and in fact, I believe he's like only played 100 games of Priest on his account whatsoever because Life Coach is one of those guys who like 
only grinds the decks that he knows will play. He doesn't really switch it around too much. And him playing Priest will definitely be a treat. Yeah, definitely. Just to see that for the first time. Uh, do you know if we could possibly get Firebat for an interview? Or uh, do you want to save that for the end, maybe? Yeah, I'll probably save that for the end. Uh, probably after his final match. It would probably be a good time. All right, cool. Uh, in any case, we will leave it on the Chinese stream here. And uh, you guys can enjoy some uh, Chinese Hearthstone highlights. See you uh, when we get back.